yeah if you're here early check yeah just click the link in the the stage chat and just come into the uh come into the live stream and just listen to these beats i don't know what's considered to be halal and what's not but this track sounds pretty halal If you're not Muslim, then you probably shouldn't really care too much, but. We got like five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the notifications. Welcome in, Silver. Oh, yeah, that's hello. All right, bad, bad. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome in, Reze. Reze. Welcome in, welcome in. If you guys just want to jam out for the next four minutes or so, I got some hello playing music. Or I have some hello music playing in the live stream. So if you want to click the link there, you can check that out and just watch it and listen to there, see the visuals. Well, we got four minutes until we start and then I'll drop the actual notifications as well. Let's see what other... Uh... Actually, let's type in some hello, okay, hello beats. So there's a literal guy who is, his name is like hello beats. I'm just gonna play through his entire track. He's got warm voices, Middle East. I don't know, I kind of like this guy. I like this guy's music, it's nice. Uh, is it instrumental music? Ramba. Uh, I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it is. Been struggling with this uh, for a whole. Wait, what? Really? Oh, instrumental music is a rom. So wait. Uh. Well, well, Omani, listen to the, listen to the the tracks that are being played as of right now in the, the live stream, and tell me if you know if this is Haram or not. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I will actually do research on that, and I'll certainly create a, a podcast on it if you guys are interested in seeing it, or just a private stage. And we can talk about it in terms of like what's haram and what's not. I'll do a little bit more research, and maybe even bring it bring up some conservative Muslims who happen to know a little bit more than I do, or a decent amount more than I do in regards to the music aspect. Distracting you from your Muslim duties, or when it says, "Okay, yeah, that makes sense." I can understand that from, yeah, from not distracting you from taking care of your business, taking care of the things that are necessity. All right, hold on, let me send it these notes. there was more people but oh well well i just sent out the notification so we're about to see if more people join or not usually they do and it's cool if they happen to find this to be beneficial to them great if not what can you really do right that's all you can do i'm doing it for the people who are here who are interested and who generally feel like they need it who feel like it, it's it's valuable to them or maybe even experienced with it right so all right, it's three o'clock. Let me go ahead and turn this music off. 
We'll turn it up. Oh, we'll turn it down a little bit, actually. I'll have it play in the background a little bit. Let's see if the stream still sees it. Like I said, guys, if you guys want to actually see the live visual of this with the small or very minuscule background music, then just click the link. I had shared it in the the open chat of the stage. It's a, If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see it. But that's where it's showing the live visual, obviously, with my face, with the live chat of anything you happen to post on there or not. And, you know, and then it shows, like, my social tag. But aside from that, let's go ahead and hop right into it, guys. You know, oh, wait, we got seven people in here. Welcome in. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. How are you all doing today? So how are you going to do the podcast? What do you mean? We got, what's the subject, guests and all that? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, the subject is on self-improvement loneliness, or just, I guess, yeah, self-improvement loneliness for the most part. People will generally, I'll break it down for you as we get into it, but let's just go ahead and hop straight into it, all right? And then you'll understand a little bit as I start to start to talk about it a little bit more, all right? Sound good. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, elites. This is your host, Meech FD, and welcome back to another podcast formerly known as the We In Here Experience, the podcast that's dedicated to guiding you through your journey of self-improvement and helping you become the best version of yourself. Today, the topic is going to be on loneliness, more specifically self-improvement loneliness. And these questions happen to pop up within a lot of people's lives and just during their entire self-improvement journey i know it has for me for sure and these three questions we're going to be sitting down answering which is how can i be, how can i overcome this overwhelming feeling of loneliness and connecting with others in a meaningful way is there something wrong with me that makes it difficult for me to form close relationships or friendships and where can i sense of uh, where can i find a sense of belonging and acceptance and how do I know when I've truly found my tribe of people who understand and support me? But before we get started, I want to make sure I give a formally, I give formal thanks to I Am Lucid for giving me the opportunity to broadcast to, uh, broadcast this podcast to his lovely Discord audience. If you'd like to be a part of this experience in real time, join his Discord at IamLucid.gg or check out my YouTube channel, The We In Here Experience. They will be tagged inside of my Discord uh, Discord profile, or you can scroll up in the chat and you'll see the link directly to the podcast itself. This bar broadcast goes live every Sunday, normally goes live every Sunday at two o'clock p.m., but as of today, I have work that I have to take care of that is a mandatory for tomorrow, so I won't be able to do it tomorrow, so we're choosing to do it today. And then, of course, uh, there is an audio podcast as well, which is on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Buzzsprout, and Overcast. If you are interested in listening to that on the go, working out, or just during your free time. This audio and video are being recorded live, of course. So anyone who is given a chance to come up on stage uh, to discuss or even just ask questions directly, please ref avoid excessive levels of profanity, racial slurs, debating or any form of disrespect towards the host or hostess, uh, participants, Discord owners or mods, and the audience. For those who may show love and support on the live viewing of this podcast from the YouTube side, subscriptions, donations, questions, comments, and any kind of love, just know that I truly do appreciate you and that I will shout you out when those instances comes about, as well as feel free to let me know if you have already subscribed and or if you have a question, and I will get to it as fast as I can, as best as I can, and most likely will be during the Q&A section of this podcast. All links to everybody's profiles, including myself, and then I am Lucid, and his Discord will be linked in the description of this, this podcast. And for now, let's go ahead and start off with the foundation, and then I will start to uh, look at the questions that happen to be showing up in the chat, or uh, just to, um, or I'll happen to bring somebody up if I feel that they may be able to provide some level of 
of value to the podcast. But without further ado, let's talk. But, you know, now I want to kind of start this off with uh, a little bit of a story. I know everybody kind of likes stories, right? So, in a small town surrounded by rolling hills, lived a teenage boy named Alex. He was a smart and curious guy, but he felt really alone, like no one noticed him in this busy town. Every day he saw kids hanging out and having a blast together, forming tight groups that seemed impossible to join. He felt left out. Alex wanted to be a part of their fun, but he was shy and scared of getting rejected. One day, while walking home through a sunny meadow, he found an old oak tree. Sitting under its branches, he felt really down about being alone. But something inside of him told him to be brave and take a chance on making friends. So, he made a promise to himself. He'd start small and try to be more open to others. Alex began with a smile, and then he started saying kind things and offering help whenever he could. People noticed the change in him, and they liked the new Alex. It wasn't always easy, but he kept going, knowing that improving himself took time and effort. One afternoon, a girl from his class, named Lily, surprised him by joining him under the old oak tree. She saw the effort he put in and thought it was cool. They started talking, sharing stories and dreams, and they really got to know each other. Alex realized that it all started with just one decision, to face his loneliness and to reach out to other people. The oak tree, the old oak tree became a symbol of strength and never giving up, a reminder that growth and friendships could start in unexpected places. Now the boy who felt invisible became a guiding light for others showing them how self-improvement and connection were possible. Under the branches of the old oak tree, his legacy of friendship and growth lived on like a cherished tune in the hearts of those who knew him. My freshman year of high school, year one, I had no friends. I kid you not, I was a loner, you know, Obviously, I was pushed around and bullied and whatnot. And, of course, there was, a, there was a few people that I actually knew, like, I guess somewhat knew, and that I interacted a couple times, maybe at birthday parties or get-togethers, family reunions, or something of that sort, right? And we would say hello from time to time, and th- but that was about it. I didn't really actually know them, and I couldn't say that they were genuinely my friends. I had a group of, a group of boys that... I would play PS4 with, but that's about it. They all lived in different states all across the nation, right? And, um, you know, after we got off of playing either Fortnite or Call of Duty, quick scoping, right? Quick scoping of BO3, right? That was the only time and the only thing that we happened to bond with. That was it. Outside of that, I was just to myself. While not having any friends uh, made me... St- a pretty big target for bullying. I was bullying, I was bullied pretty much all throughout elementary school up to pretty much the second year of high school. And, you know, people would bully me around and push me around because of how skinny I was, how short I was, the clothes I wear. You know, I didn't ha- have any Jordans. I didn't have the the fancy stuff, the big well-known brands and whatnot, Nike and all that. You know, I was wearing Feli. I was wearing... Um, FUBU, I don't know if you guys even know these brands, but I was wearing some Adidas and whatnot. Like Adidas was like the mid, the midway point, right? You were like somewhat there, but you weren't like cool level unless you had like Jordans or something like that. But I was constantly pushed around and just disrespected. Nobody liked me, right? I had a high pitched voice, you know, it sounded like a straight squeaker and everything, right? And all I did whenever I would have those types of days and when I would just overly feel like alone and outcasted, after school I would go straight home, say hello. Sometimes I would say hello to my parents or whatnot, but I wouldn't say it with any enthusiasm because I knew of how what kind of day it was. You know, I I knew of what kind of day it was going to be. I would just go up to my room, I would lay in my bed, and I would be depressed. I didn't have nobody to talk to. I didn't know anyone. Uh, I was just pretty much all alone for the most part. But also during this year, this uh, freshman year, I was actually 
fairly good at, you know, something that was my escape was dance, right? Pop and lock to be more specific, you know, the animation style, tutting. I don't know if you guys have probably seen it, probably came across it before, but you know, that's, that's where I found my escape. And whenever I would do that, I would perform at like a family reunion or an event that my mom had thrown, you know, my mom would always be the one there supporting me, showing love to me, giving me that validation that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily receive from much of, like, you know, too many other people, right? And dang, I love my mom. Love you, mama, for real. But I started to see after, you know, receiving that kind of validation, I was like, and, you know, from my family members as well, I was just like, hmm, maybe I could try to, like, go out and meet other dancers, right? Other people that are of my interest that know what exactly I like to do and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, the idea of meeting other people was scary enough because I didn't put myself out there. I don't normally put myself out there or anything like that. And funny, the channel that I create my YouTube videos now in regards to self-improvement was the channel that I was posting dance videos on and all these dance films and stuff like that. And that helped me build not just an audience, but it also helped me meet other dancers to where I even traveled out to Atlanta, Georgia and met the the dancer that actually got me into dancing back in what 2014 maybe 2013 maybe even a little bit earlier than that and it was it was an exceptional experience I met and bonded with a variety of other dancers right you know it was kind of weird because I was like I'm surrounded by a crowd of dancers you know I'm just worried about being critiqued and criticized about certain skill levels and certain styles and the way that I danced and whatnot but as soon as the music turned on, I was just bumping, right? I was, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, it was crazy because I even got, got credibility and, and uh, notoriety from like veteran dancers, veteran like people who were dancing for 20, 30, 40 plus years, and that alone made me feel a lot better and made me feel less alone because I was able to interact with these people, interact with veterans as well as people who are just starting out, who are just still trying to learn the foundations of what they wanted to be and who they wanted to become, as well as other dancers who were a little bit more experienced or, you know, maybe at the same level as me. Um, and I got, you know, exchanged contacts, exchanged social handles and, it, it was great. It came out to be a quite, quite an experience, and I didn't feel alone anymore. I genuinely started to bond with people outside of the whole dance realm of things as well. And we started talking about more personal things of, of you know, our lifestyles, our backgrounds, what got us into this interest. You know, even experiencing that level of loneliness as well. And so, you know, I from that I started, you know, posting more on my social media handles, you know, on Instagram and YouTube. I started to attend more talent shows and events. I started to obviously gain traction on different social medias and like I said, I became friends with a lot of people, especially uh dancers, and that was definitely the the most impactful moment of my life. Just all starting from me taking a step forward to just be like, you know what? what do I have to lose? I already feel alone as is, right? I don't have anybody to necessarily make fun of me or something like that, right? It's a scary feeling. It's a scary feeling to put yourself out there and at least take the time to to be open, right? But I was already doing it with my family members. Why could I not do it with you know, other people, right? That I still didn't know as well. They didn't have to be blood for me to you know, not know them, so. But um, but that was my experience. That was my overall experience. Now, I do want to actually answer the questions that happened to come up in my mind and how did I overcome these specific questions um, when in regards to just feeling lonely. And the first question was obviously, how can I overcome this overwhelming feeling of loneliness and connect with others in a meaningful manner? And for me, based off of my story, I started off just by looking at who, who is interested in the things that I'm interested in? I can understand from people choosing to go to video games and go into like smoking and drinking and all these different, like, I guess I would consider to be bad habits and very 
evil gateway habits into other, you know, other paths of life. But when it comes to doing something that's more of a creative activity that it shows your expression, generally shows who you are as a human being and how you develop yourself, how your mind operates. Dance was obviously my way of doing it. So it, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be dance. It could be arts. It could be drawing. It could be it could be uh, singing. It could be a variety of different things. Anything you could pretty, pretty much think of. Even business, right? You can build a friendship uh, within people, within business, within YouTube and content creation videos, all of this stuff. But you have to put yourself in those communities, right? The first step would be to put yourself in those communities and you'd be willing to show your level of authenticity. What I've learned as being a man, if you've ever read the book, The Way of the Superior Man, if you haven't read it, I would highly recommend you read it. I'm reading it as of right now and learning and studying from it. It's a truly informative and influential book. But in one of the chapters, it specifically talks about how live with an open heart. And my interpretation in regards to the reading of this chapter is that I should be in order to really like develop myself as a man, I should be willing to open my uh, open my heart up or at least live with an open heart and take what can be even potentially harmful for me in the in the long term, right? I may end up making the mistake of like opening my heart up to the wrong person, like being genuine and being honest and being authentic to a one person. They cross me in the in the future, right? How I look at it is this. If I were to do that, okay, cool. I now have an entire history or entire timeline from when I first opened my heart up to this person to the end, let's say the end of the friendship or the, the point to where they really crossed me or did me wrong. I have that entire history of how uh, to, de to depict and break down, okay, what kind of people do these types of things? What are their patterns? What kind of, what, how do they operate? How do, they brains, how do their brains operate? What do they normally go through or what are the challenges or difficulties that would make them even have the incentive to wanting to hurt me, whether it be intentionally or unintentionally? I have all this data that I now can bring onto like throughout my life as well as teach to my children so that they're able to be more informed of the type of people that they need to either avoid completely or be aware of hey like how to actually love them and how to love those types of people unconditionally that doesn't mean you need to friend them that doesn't mean that you need to be disrespectful to them but it does mean that you can still show a a, a level of love to them and show it in a proper way right so the best way for you to overcome that overwhelming feeling of loneliness would just be you taking the step to find the community that fits you and that fits your interests it doesn't have to be one specific interest, but there are communities for every single interest that you have. Everything that you happen to be, uh, that happens to grab your attention and that you spend a lot of time in, whether that be specific YouTube creators, whether that be specific types of art, whether that be specific types of anime, it doesn't necessarily matter. There is a community for each and every one. You can name one, you can drop it in the chat, and you can name one specific, specific category or specific niche or interest that you have there's a community for that so if you ever get to the point to where you genuinely feel lonely i can almost guarantee you 80 maybe 90 percent of the people within those communities that you join have experienced that same thing if you were to dm just one of them right just one of them out of hundreds and thousands of different people and ask hey have you ever felt alone while on your self-improvement journey, for instance, right? Self-improvement journey or on your journey to become a better artist or whatever the, the interest is. I can almost guarantee you they're most likely going to say yes. Because not only are you sharing a, a level of authenticity uh, from yourself to them, like a piece of yourself to them, but you're also able, you're also taking the step forward to try to build some form of connection with somebody. You're op that's being open-hearted. That's you having an open heart. And I feel that will ultimately develop you as a man in the long term of things, in the grand scheme of things, and teach you a lot about human connection than you would if you were just to yourself and you remain to yourself. 
The second question that's usually asked that usually happens to come up in my head as well when I cover when it comes to self improvement, loneliness, or just loneliness in general, is that is there something wrong with me that makes that makes it difficult for me to form close relationships and friendships? I'll answer this for you. No, there is nothing wrong with you. It has nothing necessarily to do with you specifically, like a specific characteristic or a specific act that you happen to operate in. Your actions very well could be a reason why you're not finding quality people, but in a lot of cases, it may not be the main reason as to why you're not finding anyone to speak with or to bond with. Now, I will say that your actions are truly impactful in who exactly you attract into your life. But I don't believe it's the end all be all. The way that you think is going to be another reason for it as well. So if you don't necessarily take care of your mental state, okay, your mental health is fairly important, especially as a man. It's so, so, so important for you to take care of that. Now, you very well can go about your life completely ignoring what's on your mind and whatnot. But how are you exalting it? How are you putting it, taking those thoughts and putting it into your work? How are you taking those thoughts and completely negating them, ignoring them, cutting them off? How exactly are you handling with the, the thoughts that happen to stir up into your mind? What are you doing? Are you journaling about it? Are you meditating about it? Are you praying about it? Are you being more authentic and open to yourself and telling yourself, hey, look, this is exactly how I feel. Okay, you acknowledge it. Your acknowledgement is most important. Don't deny what is true and what's going on within your head. Be honest with yourself and then operate, okay, what can I do to fix that? Maybe having to go to work will fix that. Maybe going to the gym will fix that. Maybe showing love to my loved ones will fix that. There's all I believe there's always a fix to what's going on up here. And usually it just has to do with you as a man of operating a manner physically to fix it. We all have intrusive thoughts. It all depends on are we going to act on those intrusive thoughts or not? Are we going to allow those intrusive thoughts to stop us from truly achieving what we want to achieve from being willing to go and connect with those people we want to connect with to build a bond with the people we want to bond with you have to take the steps to think about what you are going what your mind is going through what's stopping you from really particular like partaking in a specific action if you're thinking too much if you're scared of failure, you're scared of rejection, you have to ignore your mind at that point. You can acknowledge what's going on, but at that point you need to acknowledge, okay, why exactly are you feeling that type of way? And if you take the step to completely cut off those thoughts, I can almost guarantee you completely cut off those thoughts just at those that brief moment, just to go and speak to that person that you want to speak to or to join that community that you want to join. It's like that thought usually falls out of your brain by itself. It usually goes away, it usually fades away. It may be there for a faint amount of time when trying to interact with that one person, but after that, it's, it's practically gone. But there's nothing wrong with you because each and every person that you interact with have similar thoughts because otherwise they wouldn't be in that community they joined that community specifically. They wanted to be a part of a tribe. They wanted to feel connected with other people and to get help from other people and to build with other people. You're not alone in that instance and there's nothing wrong with you wanting that. That's our innate nature. We want to build and be within a tribe, within a community, and be accepted within that community and get advice and criticism and show off and validation from that community. That's how we build our confidence. That's how our, com our confidence grows. That's how our comfort within a certain realm grows. And overall, that's just how we feel better about ourselves. 
because we're with a tribe, we're with the people that we actually want to be around. We're not worried about the people who are there trying to distract us and pull us down. And the third and final question that may very, I, I can almost guarantee you has come across people's, you guys' mind, which is where can I find a sense of belonging and acceptance? And how do I know when I've truly found my tribe of people who understand and support me? Now, listen, when you join a community, you can't, there's not an always guarantee that you're going to feel comfortable. It's not an always guarantee you're going to feel like you're accepted. You're going to join particular groups of people who are just straight up evil, straight up twisted, that are just trying to hurt you and break you down and send you outside of the competition. You may even feel just as lonely, if not even more lonely, by joining a specific community than you did before. And trust and believe, I know how that feels. And sometimes we pick the wrong people to be around. We may be picking more based off of emotion rather than based off of logic. This is where the, the splitting happens. This is where the, the true test of feeling accepted or not happens. When you happen to either choose a specific community based off of primarily your emotions over thinking about the community in the regards to a logical standpoint, how will this community benefit me? How can I benefit this community? It's a two-way street. You're not just specifically going, you shouldn't be just specifically going there trying to join the community without contributing. That's one thing to where it can cause you to feel lonely because at that point you see all these other people within the community providing, giving value, offering all this stuff to you for free, maybe for paid, I'm not entirely sure, it depends on the community, offering all this type of stuff for you, all this valuable information for you. And you're just taking it in, not giving anything. That is where you're going to feel lonely because you're going to reach such a, a peak of it, not even just loneliness, but you're also going to feel overwhelmed in, with an immense amount of knowledge and information that you're not decompressing. You're not putting it into anything else. And that's why a lot of people, even within self-improvement discords, still have a large amount of questions because they only go there to get their questions answered. They never go there to answer other people's questions. The other people's confusions, the lack of empathy is what is going to make you feel alone. That is your answer. If you lack empathy, you are going to feel alone. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. You can't resonate with anybody and nobody can resonate with you because you lack empathy. Not sympathy, no, empathy. Your best bet for you to truly feel like you're a part of a community is to do what a community does. Provide to each other, support each other, love each other, teach each other, inform each other. That is what a community does. That's what a tribe does. You raise each other up. That's what brings the tribe together and closer as well as makes it stronger. When you join a community or a tribe in a brotherhood, you are there to provide and you, you, get what you, you get what you give. You get what you give. So if you're not giving anything, you're not getting anything. Simple as that. If you're not giving anything to the community, you're not getting anything from the community. So be willing to provide whatever advice, even if you think you may be wrong about it, so on and so forth. Who knows? You, there's always something for you to learn. There's always something for you to learn. You can't be scared to offer your opinion or give your opinion and make it known that it's just strictly your opinion and not a definite fact. That's one thing a lot of people happen to struggle with and where they end up getting outcasted is by them saying that this is a definite fact and that anything else besides what I'm telling you is false. Okay. Those people, usually a lot of cases, get outcasted from the tribe because they're not considering what could and couldn't be. 
We don't all know the definite and absolute truth. We are not God, nor can we ever say or ever should we say that we are God. We can only learn and adapt and evolve and even readjust our opinions and our beliefs with the additional wisdom and information we get from people who have different experiences, but who have gone out to do the inner work after experiencing those experiences. So don't be so, don't get caught up in the idea of what does it all take to really build a connection with someone, to build a foundation with someone, to build a bond with someone, to, to get a friend by your side. Trust and believe I know how it feels when you don't got nobody to talk to in your loneliness moments, in your toughest moments. You feel like you're going to fail. You feel like you're failing. You feel like you're a failure. You feel like you haven't done anything right. You feel like you haven't made any progress. You feel like that you're just a piece of, you feel like you're garbage. You feel like you aren't, you aren't worth anything. Trust me, I know how it feels. But you're not that. You are not a piece of garbage. If you treat yourself like it and you consume a ton of garbage, of course you're going to feel like that. We are what we consume. Think about it. We are what we consume. There is so much stuff out here that is good for us, but there is a hell of a lot more stuff that are really bad for us, that a lot of people consume, that you may consume in your day-to-day -day life to this day right now. There may be something in your life that you are consuming that is fairly toxic. And you need to identify it as soon as possible. Otherwise, it may get to the point where you're too late. You may have done too much damage to yourself or vice versa to somebody else, to your loved ones, to people you care about. And there's no turning back. The only person who will be able to save you is Allah himself. But as of right now, this is your chance to build some level of, to build a community, to build a tribe, to join a tribe, to join a brotherhood. As men, as young men, we need brothers to push us forward. You need people like-minded to push you forward, to do better. This whole solo, dolo, lone wolf crap, I'm sorry, that's stupid. This entire country, the West, is so focused on wanting to do everything ourselves, the independency. Each person is just like, nah, I don't think this person should have to know my problems and know what I'm going through and this, that, and another. No, bro. That's exactly why you feel alone because you think that you ain't worth jack. You're not worth listening to. You're not worth being, like, being able to vent with, like, that's not the case at all. Knowing who you should speak to is important, right? Don't just, just tell anybody. Because you may tell the wrong person. That person may end up just going off and telling somebody else and starting a whole rumor or misunderstanding what you were saying. And it's like, why go through all that stress? You do need to learn how to feel. Like, I do say that you need to have an open heart. I do agree with that ideology. But I also believe that it is still important for you to filter out those people as well. Because when you have an open heart, it's easier for you to filter out who's the right people to be around and who's not. Who are your true friends and who are the snakes? Who are the people that are actually loving on you and who are the people who want to see you fail? That is the strength and the pro and the absolute greatness of having an open heart. Because you end up learning so much about the different types of people you interact with and meet versus you trying to be on your paranoid 
level, <laughs> right? And you're searching through all these people like, oh, yeah, this person's cool. This person's cool. Just because y'all had a couple good conversations and so on. So, um, watch their actions. Watch how they speak to you. Watch how they speak to other people. Pay attention. Listen. The better listener you are, the better listeners you will get. Hopefully that all made sense, but that's pretty much that's pretty much what I had to say in that regards to that topic. So what do you guys think? What did you guys think about this topic? How do what did you guys think about what I said? Any questions? Sheep says that was moving. I'm glad to hear that, brother. Uh, Foreman said, look at my opinion. Shoes are a waste of money. Like it goes on your feet. Who cares? Amani, uh, definitely, definitely ask some questions for sure. <laughs> Asan says, uh, the better listener you are, the better listeners you get. Yo, 100%. <laughs> I just don't know how to say them. I mean, whatever questions happen to come to mind, uh, whatever you have to say, like do the best you can to 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 type it out. I'd be more than willing to answer it the best that I can. But yeah, guys. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think that was a really good podcast. I won't even lie. Uh, Dean Dino says, "How you learn to just uh, stick to stick to stuff? Like, bruh, I can't get like a routine proper. You got any tips?" So, the whole idea of a like, routine, Dino, is that it's something that one it falls within. You, I guess, in a sense, your level of comfortability at the start. But it also has to align with exactly what you're trying to do. So let's say you need more time in the morning to specifically get get shit done, to get your stuff done. What I would say to that is, okay, obviously waking up early. Maybe, And then let's say after that, okay, you started to wake up early. You have more time to do things, to do the things that you want to do. But you then you run into another problem. That problem is I don't necessarily feel all the way there mentally in the morning, okay? So how about on top of waking up early in the morning, you now focus on meditating or you focus on journaling as well. As soon as, let's say for five to 10 minutes on each task or one of the other tasks early in the morning to decompress whatever thoughts or feelings that you have that are going on within your mind and your body. Great, cool. You started to wake up early as well as you started to journal and or meditate early in the morning as well. Okay, you have a little bit of a clearer mind. You feel a little bit better about yourself. Okay, but then you run into another problem. That problem could be is, hey, I happen to read too long. Or I'm sorry, I happen to write too long when I'm journaling. Okay, specifically set a timer for 10, 15 minutes to strictly only write for that long. Or maybe you run into the problem where I don't really have any thoughts or I don't really know what to necessarily do, but I still feel bad. Get down and do push-ups, do sit-ups, do squats, do a physical activity, go outside to get some sunlight, to allow your body to, allow your body's blood to start to move and, and fluctuate throughout your body. So that way you feel not only because you've gotten your vitamin D, obviously, but you start to feel a little bit more energized because you are out in nature. You spent time in nature and you spent the time within your natural habitat, I guess you could say. There are many ways of how you can go about your daily routine and how exactly you carry yourself and how exactly you can maintain something. But it all starts with what are you trying to obtain? What are you trying to accomplish? Does that kind of make sense? Hopefully that answers your question, Dino. So let me, let me see. What do you think of my message here? Is there anything you feel like you'd add? I will respond to that in a sec, Hassan. Give me one sec. I want to make sure I get through everybody else's like general questions. How do you deal with 
quote unquote, the cool kids who always bully for low key, no reason. Now, when I was bullied, as I mentioned earlier, it was more based off of my appearance. It was based off of what I was bringing to the table, I guess you could say. And, and when I'm bullied for those specific things, let's say, let's say somebody was bullying, is bullying me because I'm skinny, like bullying you because you're skinny, right? Like, it depend, like you have to listen. I feel like when you are bullied, it's probably the most primitive and most important time for you to genuinely listen at what they are bullying you about. If it's the way that you look, let's say you're overweight. That is the best time for you to start working out, start learning about how can you cut down your weight, right? Or let's say they're starting to pressure or they're pushing you around because of how short you are. If you guys didn't know, working out does help stimulate growth hormones. According to, hey, look, I'm just getting it from my sources. Supposedly, working out actually does help you grow. It stimulates growth hormones. You could do the research yourself. There's certain sources that are saying that's impossible. It's only genetic. And there's other people who are also on self-improvement that you will see and or meet and interact with all throughout YouTube content who have grown three, four, maybe even five inches after 18 years old. I'm still obviously breaking my way through it, but I'm going to definitely make a video about it if I happen to, you know, calculate and actually really see if where my height was at this point to where it is now and, you know, help you guys at least see that, you know, as I'm on my journey as well. But to deal with them for men, really listen to what they're saying to you specifically focus on what they are calling out about you and work on those things. Cause that way, if they, if, if a bully doesn't have anything to call you out on, right, they could try to make fun of the good aspects of you. But usually bullies usually call out the things that are one that they are insecure about themselves and two that you, that they most likely know that you're insecure about also. All you have to do is build your confidence within those realms then the bullies won't be able to really attack you anymore because it's not even going to be looked at as an attack. At that point, once you've built your confidence up, it's not going to be an attack. It's going to be really a compliment. It's like, okay, they call you out because of you being overweight, but in reality, you're built, right? You're yoked. You're in good shape. It's just another, it's just, it's just like all you would have to do is just laugh it off, right? That's all you have to do. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that answers your question for man. Uh, Sheeb asks, how do you deal with a friend who is rather like abusive that likes to hit you for no reason? Hit them back and see what happens. Or like, there's a couple ways you can go about it. You can either hit them back and get physical with them too. Or you can learn, like, you can learn how to actually dodge those, those, like, I guess, them hitting you, them trying to hit you. Let's say they're punching you in your arm. Let's say you're able to, like, this is a little bit more autistic, <laughs> but let's say you focus heavily on, like, you evaluate, okay, when are they ready about to hit you? Like, what, like, like, they're about, to, you see, of like, their hand move in a particular way, right? It's kind of like how a boxer or an MMA style uh, an MMA fighter does. They analyze what exactly this person is doing, what what is their hand doing, which way. Like, you learn a style of martial arts. I think that's gonna do you way, way more wonders than, than you think. And also, if a friend is like being physical or getting a, a, a abusive to you, like I like, if you still call them a friend, but then you say that their actions are abusive. Those can't really coexist with each other. You can't have an abusive friend, right? You, because a friend isn't caught, like, you're not, you can break that bond. If it's a family member, obviously you could say, yeah, I have an abusive father, I have an abusive sister, I have an abusive brother, that kind of thing, right? That's by blood. But a friend, you can cut off that bond. 
Okay, you can cut off that bond. You can walk away from them. You don't have to interact with them. It's not like you live with them. It'd be one thing if you lived with them. If you lived with them, that'd be a different aspect. And obviously, you'd be older, and you could very well, I guess, in a sense, you want to go through the trouble file for assault or something like that. But just build yourself up. Maybe that's a sign to where you need to get stronger. You need to build your confidence up and be less. Be not. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself, and to place boundaries. Because if you don't like them hitting you, then let them know, hey, look, that's a part of my boundary. I don't need you hitting me. If you can't say that, well, then the person is going to continuously do that because they're going to think that there's nothing wrong with it. But you, you're clearly making it known here, Shib, that you're not, you're not okay with that. It's not really helping you. So one, I would say let them know. Let them know that's your boundary. You don't respect that. Two, Start building, start building your strength up. Start getting stronger. Three, you could very well, it could very well be them just being playful. So play with them back. Hit them back. They get offended by it. It's like eventually they'll have to stop or a little bit more of them actually starts to come out. You start to really see, okay, what kind of person is this really? You know, you get what I'm saying? So hopefully that makes sense. Amani asks, uh, when lonely does, or when lonely d I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this to make sure I'm, I'm not misreading it. When lonely, does your mind sometimes move all over the place out of nowhere? Oh, when lonely, does your mind sometimes move all over the place out of nowhere? Yes, because when you're just kind of sitting there, like for instance, right? If I was just like sitting in this, like just sitting here, right? Not, not acknowledging anything. I'm just sitting here. My mind will go, like, I would say, depending on what your attention span is, I feel like this does have to do with your attention span. Depending on what your t attention span is and what's happening around you, <clears throat> if you're staring at a brick wall or if you're standing at a plain wall, your mind will, o I feel like your mind will only move as fast as the environment around you is. So if you're watching a television, Right, and you see all these different things changing and flipping back and forth. You may catch on to one small thing on the TV, and or uh, one event that happens, so on and so forth. Right, it, it, I think it all depends on your environment. So if I'm staring out here and looking at this, you know, just natural landscape, it's very beautiful actually. My mind is going to go to more like positive things, you know, smiling, being giggly, that kind of thing. And I feel like I've I've retained a, a lot of my my mental fortitude in a lot of different cases, you know, alhamdulillah for that, with different so different practices. But I feel that when it does happen to go around and it becomes sporadic, that just means if you, especially if you don't like it, if you're not able to control it for yourself, I would highly recommend just focusing on your breathing, closing your eyes, and just focusing specifically on your breathing, because you want to have control over what's happening up here. If you don't that's when things can really get hectic for you. You have to know how to control what's going on up here. You have to. It's very primitive. Like, your mind can be absolutely dominant and destroy so many obstacles, if not every obstacle that comes your way, because you're strong up here. Without your mind, you have no body. It's impossible for you to exist without a mind. You won't even know that you're existent without your mind. So that's my perception of it. Hopefully that answered your question, brother. Let's see. What are the signs that a person picked up the wrong friend because he, or Hari, I'm sorry. Hari asked the question, which was, what are the signs that a person picked up the wrong friend because he was lonely for a long, a very long time and in need of a friend? how to avoid that, how to avoid picking up the wrong friend, or what are the signs that a person has picked up over, picked up the wrong friend? So what do you, well, I guess, I guess your question is, what do you, what's declared to be the wrong friend? I won't say someone that's bringing you down necessarily because I feel that like if someone's intentionally inflicting or trying to do evil towards you right they are literally trying to like inflict evil upon you and are truly 
evil, those people usually don't, like, don't not have friends. Those people usually are, they're surrounded by certain people that are of that same level of thinking. To where they're there to bring evil to you, to break you down, to destroy you, to hurt you, to bully you, to push you aside, right? But if this person isn't doing that, and they're more so, they're more so in need of a, some kind of love and some kind of affection. Because there are a lot of people like that. There are a lot of people who need a safe space because maybe their home, their home isn't safe. I personally believe that you become a man when you have taken responsibility of someone. If you've been played, if someone has been placed within your life, right, and you have stuck your neck out to go and speak to them and talk to them, well, for one, I would recommend you being a good example to them first, showing showing them what your boundaries are, showing them what you accept and what you don't accept, making sure it's not in inter interfering with the things that you're trying to achieve, like the purpose you're trying to shoot for. I won't say there's necessarily the wrong friends. I don't believe there's such thing as the wrong or right friend. What I will say is that there's a friend and then there's somebody that's just an acquaintance. There's somebody that's just an associate, someone you would talk to, a coworker. There's a friend, there's family, there's an acquaintance. A friend is somebody who is going to lift you up. You guys push each other back and forth to get better, to improve better. If that friend isn't doing that, what are you guys friends for? Did you guys bond over a drink, bond over a video game. What What's really making you a friend? Oh, we've known each other for an X amount of years. Okay, what, what do you mean by no? been in the same class together you've hung out and done stupid things together what makes them a friend do they call you out on the things that you have done wrong do they make sure you're staying committed to the goals and the in the words that you have stated what makes them a friend your definition of a friend is the most important thing and if you don't know what your definition of a friend is who is your friend you don't have friends if you don't have a definition. You don't have what you accept and what you don't accept. There's pros and cons. There's things that you do think that is okay to keep around you. And there's people that you don't want to be around because of the type of things that they do. And that they knowingly do. Intentionally do. Know what your definition of what a friend is. And understand the difference between a friend, a family member... Or, I'm sorry, friend, family, and acquaintance. And an enemy. You have to know the difference between an enemy as well. Alright. Hopefully that made sense to you, brother. Make sure I've asked you. What do I do? Oh, Gems asked, what do I do uh, with a friend that's mentally abusive to me? Identify how they're being abusive to you, for one. If they are... If they are constantly beating you down about a particular thing, there may be something that you're not necessarily accepting of yourself, or something that they're saying resonates with you so hard that you still haven't acknowledged that it's true. That it's something that you do or something that you genuinely see yourself doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But you haven't acknowledged it to be true. Right? So, understanding what exactly are they being, how what is considered to be abusive. Because I feel this word is thrown around quite often and truly people don't understand what's really considered to be abusive. Now, I'm not saying that what you're experiencing is not abuse. I don't know the full context. And I will not proclaim that I know it. But what I will say is that there is a very, very distinctive difference between what is abusive and what is a misunderstanding. Okay? So declaring what exactly is abusive is important. But if you have someone that is a friend, that someone you personally call a friend that you trust, being abusive to you, that's not a friend. 
Okay, but if you still call this person a friend, even already acknowledging that they're abusive, quote unquote, then nine times out of ten, that may be a misunderstanding. There may be something that they're doing you don't quite understand. And if you've never asked them, if you've never gone into a detailed conversation about them and were willing to talk to them about it, that's not you being a good friend. You're not being a good friend to them at all because you're not being honest with them. If you can't be honest and upfront with your friends, they aren't your friends because that means you don't trust them. If you're not honest and open about what's, what they are doing, that makes you feel a particular type of way. That's not a friend. You have to understand the difference. I understand that all these people who have, have made it very clear, even in different communities, different religions or whatnot, they've made it clear. Like you can, you can be friends, the wrong person, right. Or befriend someone improperly. Right. You may give your, or I wouldn't even say improperly. I mean, you can be friend. You can, cause when you friend somebody, you're ultimately giving them your trust. I would like to look at it like this. Cause I, cause the whole friendship aspect, of, I look at it like this. I consider people my brothers, right? Like they're, they're either my brothers, people I actually like hold dear to my heart. Like if something were to fall down, I know who I would go to, right? I got people that I can confide in, that I can see, or, or, or I'm sorry, like there are people that you can very well confide in. There's other people that you just kind of chatted up a little bit here and there. The people you chatted up with here and there are acquaintances. The people that you can confide in for a favor or for a little bit of information or something like that. That's a friend that you can trust their source or trust where their source is coming from. That's a friend. And a brother or sister are the people who are pushing you to your absolute limit, who want to see you win and you vice versa. And if you live by these definitions and by these, these way, this operating and thinking, this ideology, you have no problem by knowing who the real people are in your life that you need to be aware of, that you need to keep within your life, keep within your circle. And other people that you just need to keep at a distance and not give so much attention to, not give so much of your energy to. Your attention, your energy are your most valuable assets without them. If you don't have them, you can't put your energy elsewhere. You can't fulfill what you want to fulfill elsewhere. You can't. You cannot. So uh, Hari's question was, or, or Gems, hopefully that answered your question though. But Hari asked, how to avoid picking the wrong friend because you were lonely? The people that you, I would say for one, establishing yourself within some level of a tribe or community, because then you have an, a, such an, an excess amount of people. If you happen to choose someone that's like a friendship is both ways. Okay. A friendship is both ways. You have to understand that if you're not providing value to that friend and that friend isn't providing some level of value to you. That's not a friendship. It cannot be one-sided. You cannot only go to them without you doing any work. You cannot, allow, you cannot go to them and vent to them all of your feelings and emotions and not make yourself open to them doing that to you. That is being selfish. That is being a dickhead. That's being a horrible friend. You must understand that it is a two-way street. A relationship is a two-way street. A marriage is a two-way street. A friendship is a two-way street. Family is a two-way street. There is no singular streets, bro. There's no one way. If you're not here to, to give, you are not getting jack shit. That's it. You're not getting anything. I don't care. You have to understand that if you're not willing to give, even when your heart doesn't feel like giving, you're not getting anything back. You're not. You're not. You're going to remain alone. You have to build 
yourself up to, you have to build other people up to, even if it's just you giving a little bit of encouragement. That is still providing value. We all need encouragement. We all need a sense of validation of some sort. We all want to love. We all want to be freaking connected to someone or something. You can't do that and can't experience that if you don't give that to someone else. You don't give that opportunity to someone else. It's impossible. You won't even know how to identify it if you don't give it out. How do you find valuable friends? Give more than you take, bro. Give more to people than you take. That is the best way for you to find friends. Give more than give more than people you take. Give more. Just just give more. I, I guarantee you, you will find, you will definitely find more friends and build more friendships by you giving more. What if they aren't interested? Is there something wrong I'm doing? If they're not interested in you, look, I don't know anyone that wouldn't necessarily take a level of encouragement to take a, a compliment. I, I like anyone that literally is like ignoring that or not saying like not saying thank you or just not being respectful of it or so on and so forth. For one, you can't expect anyone to just be your friend just because you gave them a compliment, you gave them encouragement. No, you have to kind of go at it, go at it without a level of expectation, okay? Because at that point, you are able to show that level of love and appreciation to people and see their reaction. Like, you, you just get, what you get back could very well just be a good response, right? So taking consideration of of what you can actually be bringing to other people. I hope that makes sense, though. Even if they don't, even if they are not "quote unquote" interested, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be able to pick up on people that aren't really, aren't really entwined or aren't really responding to you, right? I interact with these people as well. Like they'll. I'll see somebody, I'll say, hey, look, good afternoon. Just, like, good afternoon to them. They'll say, <laughs> I've caught a couple people who, like, will say the wrong thing. It'll be like, you too, right, in, in response to good afternoon. And, like, there was, like, there was specifically two girls where I said this to. I said, like, good afternoon. She said, you too. She was like, ooh. Like, she, I could hear the mistake that she, she was like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say good afternoon because she, she thought I was going to say something else. And they, and I was like, hey, look, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry, it's fine. We both, we all smiled, we all laughed and giggled, and we went about our day. Even just as something as simple as that, people appreciate. I put a smile on their faces. I made them feel a little bit more comfortable and better about themselves. All just from me saying good afternoon and just being like, hey, look, don't worry about it, it's okay. I, I do that too. That's it. It's a level of authenticity. That's being authentic. That's not you being like a perfectionist. That's not you thinking that you're the top dog or whatnot. Like, no, that's just you being authentic. So, hopefully that makes sense. Um, what, what does it say? Oh, how do, you, how do you deal with just a general feeling of being tired all the time, even if you had lots or had, let's say, 10 hours of sleep? Okay, feeling tired all the time. Now, I mean, I feel that's kind of like a different. Well, one that's a different topic. I, for one, that's a different topic. I, I'll be more than willing to create a a podcast dedicated to you know sleep and improving your sleep and stuff like that, right? But if you're still tired after ten hours, I mean, I, I'll just respond to this briefly. But if you're feeling tired after ten hours of sleep. For one, you very well could be just sleeping too long. I mean, 10 hours out of 24 hours of the day. Me personally, 
I'd be kind of tripping out for the simple fact that like I spent 10 hours sleeping when I could have spent like, let's say six hours sleeping and then the other four hours like working or developing, like building the legacy, building the empire, sharing and showing love to people, right? I, 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 I kind of wouldn't find that okay in my opinion. But if you still feel tired, I would recommend starting just to do different activities that consist of you being more outside in nature, in the sunlight, getting that natural energy, right? As well as being more physically active, walking, working out. You may have a low, you may have low testosterone, right? I, I think just being more active is going to be the number one thing for you in regards to feeling tired. Your energy reserves are fairly low. Um, does having a skill increase the chances uh, to network with others and build trust with others? Being skilled in some avenue very well can open doors for you and improve your network and improve your net worth, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will bring you the best of friends, I guess you could say. It could better, you're, you're, you may be able to meet, I guess, higher quality people per se in regards to that specific skill set, right? What I, I would like to look at it kind of like this. Depending on the foundation of that friendship could very well shift or make the really like the friendship all together. So if you are if you guys are connecting based off of based off of I don't know, let's say video editing, right? That's something what I do. I, I'd say video editing. I'm connecting with somebody based off of video editing. They may not be a very good conversationalist out you know outside of talking about video editing. They may be absolutely terrible at speaking about life or being authentic or being open or whatnot. And it's just like, okay, so the only thing I can really speak to them about is like video editing. Nah, I don't like to look at it that way. If I really wanted to get to know this person a little bit more about them, it's just be like trying to see what exactly interests them. If they're not really making an effort to wanting to talk, well, then we'll just keep it at that. Cause like, well, if you're not really interested in having a conversation, then why, why should I really put 10 fourth or 10 X amount of time into you. If you genuinely aren't interested. I'm like, why I'm not going to try to force somebody to try to have a conversation with me when they're genuinely not interested in having a conversation with me. I'm like, why would I do that? Right. If they genuinely want to interact with me and have a conversation with me, cool. Then we can do that when they actually show interest, when you show interest, and then you back off after they've already declared, like denied your interest, right? It's fine. You just have to take it with a grain of salt. It's fine. It is what it is. Some people are going to do that to you. Others aren't. You can't be scared of that rejection. There's, I mean, you're going to find people to connect with. Straight up. Uh, welcome in, Nia. I don't know if he's still in here or not. I'm, I'm like looking at two different pages, so. And. Audie, thank you, Demetrius. You always educate us, and I appreciate you for that. Audie, I appreciate you for coming in here and just being willing to listen to what I have to say and just my opinion, my perspective on the world and my perspective on life. And just, you know, and, and all together, I just truly appreciate you being here. And I'm just glad I can help. So, alhamdulillah. Mm, all right. And... Body language, communication skills. Yes, body language and communication skills, very well so. I definitely believe, and I, I would say I'm a, I, I won't say I'm a speaking testimony or anything like that in regards to that, but I will say that improving your communication skills and improving your body language very well can help you meet and interact with more people 100%. Because if you're able to identify how somebody is responding to you, yeah, how somebody is, I guess, showing their, like, what like what exactly their body is doing or how their tone of voice is or what their facial expressions they're giving to you if you're able to pick that stuff out on like pick the pick up on that stuff you can very well respond and change the way that you're speaking to them to to match that and you and because if you match that energy based off like by showing it in your body language maybe or using a, a counterintuitive um a form of body language or communication 
that combats their their way of their way of communicating to you, or their way their body language to you, or their tone of voice, or whatever the case may be, you would most likely find more success of like, okay, oh, so this is how human psycho psychology works, or you know, maybe this is this is what works and what doesn't. That that kind of thing. You experiment. You get to learn about different types of people, different types of things, and just yes, uh, I, that was a little bit of a tangent, but that was just my perspective. And yes, I do agree that building your knowledge and body language as well as communication and et cetera, just understanding psychology of humans and such, very well so can help you build connections with people a lot faster and more efficiently as well, even stronger bonds. I highly, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, all right, so I love you, Alec. I appreciate you, brother. Um, I think we got all of the general questions. Uh, oh, Creative said, Demetrius, where did you learn video editing and how long did it take you to learn it? So to my current skill level as of right now, it, I mean, I've been creating and editing videos since, what, 2014? Maybe 20, either 2014 or 2017. I think I made my first YouTube channel in 2017. But... I was messing around with like iMovie and different stuff like that. I would just learn the platform, right? I would learn as well as create, because I was creating my own content and whatnot, I was messing around with different effects. I would come across other content creators that are making you know, stuff that I found to be really cool and I would try to mimic or imitate that exact effect or that style of video. And I would just implement it into mine. I would be like, okay, how can I make this effect? Oh, I seen something, I seen an effect within that editing software that I can kind of shift and make into my own or make quite similar, like to replicate it. You know, it's it because that's what creativity is. It's it's a it's like a an extension off of what somebody else has already created or what's already out there. But it's just in your own style, I guess you could say. Right? So hopefully that, that kind of makes sense to you. I need help with no fab any tips, maybe it's it's okay if not. Um, Ezekiel, I, I'm not entirely sure if you're still in here or not. If you're still in here, in regards to just no fab, I'll just make this brief so that way I can, you know, we can finish this out. For no fab, I made specifically a a podcast for that. I would I'll drop the I'll drop the link in here for you. Actually, I prefer I would prefer you to actually go and watch that instead of you know, just kind of coming in here and asking questions. Because if you genuinely want help within NoFab, I think getting more in-depth with specific, uh, like with the specifics, the things that are, you know, that I've experienced, similar, so on and so forth. You know, I'll drop the link here. I have a couple videos about it, a couple podcasts with it. And, you know, hopefully this helps Ezekiel. So, hold on, here you go. So that, you're welcome. So that is the, that's the podcast link of when I did it live and it was answering a lot of questions in regards to NoFap and whatnot. So definitely go ahead and listen to that. Let me know if your feedback as well, if it helped you or not. Um, I also have a full breakdown video as well of, I guess it's, it's related to more sexual mutation, like our sexual transmutation. So it's focusing on taking that sexual energy or those urges and transferring them into something more productive. So instead of like acting out on your urges, you're acting in a more physical sense towards other endeavors or the things that you want to achieve, your goals, for instance, right? So if you are interested in that as well, um, I would be more than willing to send that to you or uh, I'll drop that in the chat. But for now, I'll just recommend you at least watch that podcast and see if that helps you. But yeah, I. How do I improve my game? When it comes to speaking to, to women, um, I think that's going to be another podcast for another, for another time. I think there will be a podcast for another time. I would just say, for one, your, your confidence. Your confidence is obviously going to be a big thing. Confidence is obviously the most biggest thing possible, but... I definitely, I definitely um, recommend that you uh, just focus on building your confidence first, bro. Because I mean, that's 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 just a major key. 
in it all. That's just something brief I wanted to say. But if you're around others, uh, you have no choice. To, if you're busy, there is no time to fight. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, pretty much we got it. Uh, looks like we got all of our questions. Pretty much got everything for the most part. Hey, look, I truly appreciate everybody that had came here today. Thank you to everyone who participated in the discussion, of course. Um, those who didn't, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, right? But um, big thanks to the, let's see, who was the most active within the chat today, bro? Like, uh, I mean, y'all, there was a lot of people chatting. There's a lot of you guys who were chatting, but I say the most most active ones, I seen Dino. Um, let's see, I seen Dino. I seen Creative, definitely. Creatives, you were definitely active for sure. Uh, Sheeb. Gems, I see you in there as well. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think those are the main people who were active. And then I see Hassan, he was very really active. Omani, he was very really active. Foreman, he was very active. Uh, Rizé. Rizé was, uh, was active a little bit, I see. And then, of course, Alec, closer to the end, I see you. They were very active as well. I appreciate you. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you to all those people that I just named that were fairly active. To anyone who came late to the live broadcast, don't worry. The stream will remain up on my YouTube channel, aka the We In Here Experience. Or I think it's yeah, I think it's the We In Here Experience podcast. Yeah, the We In Here Experience on YouTube. <laughs> um yeah, that I don't know why I forgot what it was called. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, no. Don't worry, it's going to be up. It's still this live is gonna still be up. So if you would like to go back listen to the different questions that were asked, you know, take notes, or if you want to just listen to it on your own time, by all means, go and do so. Uh, all the links will be in my profile, in my Discord profile, so you're able to click on that stuff, you know, check them out, see if, if I happen to bring value to you, if I've brought in value to you, if I've informed you, if I've maybe gave you some motivation, maybe even taught you something that you didn't even hear or never even heard about, by all means, please go ahead and check out those socials. They will all be linked within my Discord profile. And yeah, this was a wonderful, a wonderful episode. I absolutely enjoyed this. I think it was way more concise and straightforward. And I wasn't really stumbling over my words either, which <laughs> which I tend to usually do during these podcasts. <laughs> but you know, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys, everyone on the YouTube side of things, as well as I am Lucy's Discord. I truly appreciate you guys sitting here, listening in, and asking questions to participate. Um, if you so, like I said, if you like me. And um, if you, if I've infused some new knowledge and or motivation into you today, uh, join the the elites Discord as well for those who are serious about self improvement, who want a designated area to where they can learn more about self improvement, learn more about what exactly I have to offer in terms of my perspective, I guess you could say, and what I've learned in my experiences, as well as other people that um, that I learned from as well, right? I have my own mentors, I have my own people that you know I really do look up to, and I, I happen to learn learn a lot from if you are interested in in doing so and learning about stuff like that by all means i will drop a link in there for you guys um if you are interested but um if not there's no worries i just want you guys to have a place a brotherhood uh and uh, a spot to where you could literally just get everything and anything pretty much self-improvement based right so everything is designated there for you if you like to join but outside of that thank you guys again so much for watching thank you guys so again for listening in and as always, I will see you guys next Sunday. Do we leave? Wait, wait. Hold on. I just want to make sure I'm not out of town next Sunday. If I'm not, <laughs> okay, because I, I am going to be gone. Um, I do. I'm going to be gone for probably the next week or two. But actually, I may actually try to do that, and it's going to be funny because I'm, I'm going to be doing that in a, a totally different location I've never been to. So let me see. Let me just double check. I know this is totally unprofessional. <laughs> um. Oh wait, no, actually, I may I, depending on depending on my flight. I don't know. I'll see. I may have to do it Saturday. We'll do it. We'll do it Saturday, and then um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you guys again. It's been your boy Meach. We in here. Peace out, guys. I love y'all. Thank y'all again. All right.
yeah <laughs> hopefully everybody in the youtube side like this too man this is awesome i like this i finally got that little discord thing up on the screen you guys can see a little discord screen <laughs> that's freaking awesome that's freaking awesome all right hold on i want to kind of jam out a little bit we got some little music in the background yo Uh. Hey. Uh. If y'all know who Halal Beats is, this is his music. Shout out to Halal Beats. I'm definitely gonna put his his uh, link in the chat. I, or not in the chat. I'm sorry, in the description. Actually, I should probably do that now. Hey. Uh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's it. <laughs> Peace out, guys.